Let's build some isopod enclosures. They help our plants thrive by eating any decaying matter that can cause fungal growth. I made three enclosures to fit the specific needs of the different types of isopods I have. I used a hole saw to create spaces for airflow. It's safer to go slower as you get to the plastic because I've cracked a lot of containers. Learn from my mistake. It's easier to go around the hole with a hot glue gun and then put substrate barrier on top of that. You can use a lot of different things for this, but this is what I had at the house already. After cleaning it up a bit, I put another layer of hot glue around the circle. I created a substrate specific to each type of isopods because some of them like more humidity, some of them like less humidity. This enclosure will be for my white ducky isopods. They originate from caves in Thailand, so they like a lot of humidity compared to other types of isopods that I have. So I started this substrate with some sphagnum moss, some orchid bark that I already had pre-mixed. So it had fir bark, perlite, and some sphagnum moss as well. I also added some sand for aeration. I also added activated charcoal as it absorbs harmful chemicals and bacteria. Put the same base materials in each container, but the amount of each material depended on the specific needs of each isopod. This one, I actually used a soil base that has bat guano in it. Because these isopods live in caves, typically get nutrient sources from things like bat poop and decaying matter, so I'm trying to mimic that environment as much as I can. I'm making sure that the sides with the ventilation holes is more airy and chunky and that the opposite side retains more moisture. So I'm putting more moss on this side. That way the isopods can choose if they want like to be more moist or more in like an airier situation. I also added crushed up eggshells as a source of calcium. I added a magnolia pod as well. Isopods like to eat them and it takes them a lot longer to consume them as opposed to like leaf litter. Maybe isopods also like to hide within the magnolia pod. You have to make sure that there are a lot of spaces where the isopods can hide to get as comfortable as possible. I also added different types of dried leaves to the enclosure as well. You can harvest them outside and sterilize them. It's snowing in Chicago, so unfortunately I had to buy some to get this enclosure started. So here I am introducing the isopods to their enclosure. I really hope that they like it. They start to have more babies so I can put these isopods in other types of enclosures. I added this piece of cork on top because they need a place to like congregate and like do their business. So, you know, we're hoping for more babies. We're just going to really encourage that. And I also added some leafy greens that I've been growing uh, to see how they like that as well. Because they like more humidity, I did add more water to this enclosure than I did the other enclosures. There's definitely not water sitting at the bottom of the enclosure at all. Just want to make sure that the wet side is more humid. And this is the final product. Very cute. It's giving. These are the two other enclosures that I made. If you like this type of content, be sure to follow. Bye!